Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. Okay, so today we are going to go over some banding and or grouping example um, using DAX formula. So this is a quite advanced example, I have to say, but it's, it showcases, I mean, it really showcases an awesome way that you can visualize things that, that may be a step up from what you might already be doing. So creating visualizations inside of Power BI is seriously easy, right? You, you already know this, but sometimes you can you might want to visualize them in a particular way that showcases a particular insight, which uh, traditionally would be quite hard to do. I mean, almost impossible. I wouldn't even know how, to, how you would ultimately do this inside of um, Excel, for example. Now, the example I'm going to run through today and that we've got up in front of us right now is I want to work out what my total sales is for my customers in a particular year, right? So I've got, if, you, if we check this out, I've got a filter on 2017 and I'm looking at, uh, so let's, let's have a look at this visualization first. I'm looking at um, my total sales. But what I wanted to do, right, is instead of just having this plain total sales um, per year, I actually wanted to see, okay, well, what were my total sales? But then I wanted to clearly show who were, who were my customers that grew a lot. Who are, who are the ones that had really poor growth and who are the ones that were just average growth? And so you see the, see how, whilst we can start with a really simple uh, insight, just a simple chart, this brings another element to it and you can actually visualize, well, well, is this result good? Is this total sales good in relation to what it was last year? And we can do it all in one visualization. And up here in the scatter in the scatter chart as well, this is how you can incorporate this logic into these types of comparison visualizations too. And so, um, so this is basically what I'm going to run through. I'm going to run through how you how you can actually develop this logic from scratch. So there's a couple of steps, um, and um, so let's just jump into it. Now, I'm not going to show you how to calculate sales growth. Well, actually, I'll run through how you can calculate sales growth, but we won't go into it in depth because there's a bit, uh, bit of other stuff I want to cover. Now, the main thing is, obviously, you can start with total sales, and then we can um, branch out from here to sales last year. That's a simple time intelligence calculation. Um, hopefully, you, you should already know how to do that. Just using date add, really good time intelligence calc. And then from here, right, from here, we can work out sales growth because all we've got to do is then go divide total sales by sales last year and then minus one. And then we can create a table like this, right? We can go total sales and we can also show our sales growth. But at the moment, this doesn't really group. This is where we need to use the banding. This doesn't actually group our um our customers by anything, right? All we, all we can see is, I mean, we uh, all we can see is their total sales. So in this case, I mean, if we were just looking at total sales, we, we wouldn't know um, what, what the growth was or which group these guys would be in. Um, is It would just be total sales. And that's what that sales growth is, is doing. But what I want to show is I want to show total sales, but overlaid on that, I want to see, okay, well, is the sales growth good or bad for this particular customer in that visual? Okay, so how do we do it? First of all, we've got to create the groups or bands that we would classify as good growth, bad growth, average growth, right? So that's that's first of all what we're going to do. Now, um, how we're going to do it is we're going to use the um, the enter data feature. So I'm just going to quickly whip up a table um, inside this uh, inside this feature, and I'm going to call it sales growth groups. And then this is, and this is this, and this logic, right? This logic can be reused over and over again in multiple different ways, and that's why I wanted to show this quite advanced one um, to showcase how you would do it. And then I'm going to go great growth. I'm just going to quickly type this out: great growth, average growth, and poor growth. And this ultimately will just become a supporting table. It doesn't actually integrate into our model at all. I'm just going to put a min and a max here. And then I'm going to go. I'm going to go 200%. And then, because so I'm going to say it's really great growth if it's over 200%. And then I'm just going to go. Just quickly type this out. And so I'm just putting erroneous numbers really in for the min and the, the ultimate min and max. And so say say average growth is between 30% growth and 200% growth. So this is um, obviously. If this is realistic, who knows? Um, but this is just what we're going to do it for this example. Okay, so once I do that, I load it in, um, and I'll just quickly jump to the data model, and you will see. I think I've actually got one from my um, previous 
example that I did. So I've actually already got it in there, so I didn't even, even need to do that, but that was just because I worked up the example before. But anyway, okay, so that is now in there. So actually, I'm gonna just delete that, don't need that, but I wanted to show you how you could do it anyway. Okay, so we've got our customer groups in here, and we've got great growth, average growth, poor growth. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to calculate, we need to calculate, well, what group are all these customers in? So let's type out the formula and then see what it ultimately looks like um, with the, the new formula. So I'm gonna create a new measure and I'm gonna call this one sales per growth group. And then I'm gonna jump down to a new line here. I'm gonna go calculate total sales because we're still calculating total sales. Nothing, absolutely nothing is changing there. We're just gonna provide a different context for that calculation. So then you've got to write some logic like this where we go for every single customer, and I'm gonna use um, just values customer name here. I want to evaluate which, which row or which row remains based on the growth that that customer has had. So I'm gonna to go to do that, I'm gonna go count rows and then filter. And then this is where I'm actually gonna filter and run through the logic inside the supporting table. And so I've already got sales growth, right? And I'm gonna go greater than or equals to the min. And then I'm gonna go a double ampersand and then I'm gonna go my sales growth is less than the max. And then I gotta round that off and then you just gotta check that this actually equals to greater than zero because if it is inside any one of those then that row is going to evaluate to one and if it does then it's going to evaluate to true inside of this filter and then we're going to calculate total sales okay so i'm going to use this formula and you'll see here as i drag it into the date context nothing actually changes which is exactly what it's meant to do okay this is exactly what it's meant to do it's meant to actually equal exactly what uh, this is equaling, and this is a good way to check that it's calculating correctly. The reason being is because we've got to overlay the context of our customer segments to actually get a breakdown. So the way we can do it is we can turn it to a matrix like so, and then this is where I can bring my customer segments into columns, and now you'll see that this actually breaks up based on the growth from year-on-year -year growth for that particular customer. And that's how we can actually then uh, then create a visualization. So from here, I could then create the visualization where we look at each different customer, but we have a clear delineation between if they're a good growth customer versus a poor growth customer, but we're still showcasing total sales here, and that's the big thing. So now, if I went and, so say for instance, I went and showcased this visualization like so, this bar chart or this um, this stacked bar chart with the custom banding inside of it just, just adds that little bit more insight than just this standard visualization here, right? And through this logic or through the logic that we've developed in here, we can then create a range of visualizations. And that's how we can also, if we wanted to create a scatter chart by utilizing this calculation, and then we could bring in say another field here we could um, then add our customers, customer name to the details here. And so that in itself, I mean, that isn't really helping us a significant amount in terms of insight. If I, if I had just played this like this, I mean, that's pretty busy if you think about it. Now, if I can overlay, but because, but because we've got this logic inside of there, I can then overlay my customer segments in the legend, and then that's gonna break down the good versus, um, you know, the good versus bad growth customers. And so it just brings that additional insight or additional element to your visualizations to really break things down. So that's why I wanted to run through that logic. It's a really powerful example if you think about it. And it's not the only way that you can use this technique. There's many, many ways you can use this technique. Just think about the logic that we went through here and think about what logic or which banding you could do on any calculation or any metric that you that you calculate. It's just a matter of setting it up and running through very similar logic. Okay, I'm gonna round things off there. Hopefully you found this one insightful. Uh, there's so many applications for this and I just love how quickly you quickly and effectively you can band or group elements in your data sets and create visualizations which really showcase those sort of things.
If you want to download this PBIX file, you can. Just requires a small investment. You can download this one and, and many others. About over 50 now, uh, maybe 70, uh, maybe close to closer to 70 actually. 70 um, examples that you can download, and that's just through Enterprise DNA Resources. Um, check out the link in the description below. Okay, hopefully, um, hope you like that content. If you did, um, and you can see how this, you could really apply this yourselves. I uh, really appreciate a like on the video and certainly don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV, um, new fresh Power BI content every weekday. Okay, all the best with this one. Hopefully you can get this into your models. Take care.